Today, I'm going to show you how to kill Calvaryon and not die to PKers. This is Iron Man Focus, but works for mains on a budget as well. Let's start with gear and inventory. Warning, do not take any items you're not willing to lose into the wilderness. This is the gear and inventory that I personally used to learn, and it seemed to be adequate. A salve E is highly beneficial because Calvaryon is considered undead and you get the 20% bonus with the enchanted version. A leaf bladed battle axe on crush. And then from here, we're really going for budget strength bonus, which is why I chose rune gloves, climbing boots, and the myth's cape is for the extra crush accuracy. For your inventory, I take one super combat, four prayer potions, two ceridoman brews, they're not required, but they're nice for tanking PKers. I take a two-dose stamina, just in case I have to tank all the way to the ditch. I take combo eats. I take four shark, shark and the rest has Quran bronze. And then don't forget your one-click teleport above 20 wilderness. And I personally like to use the royal seed pods since they're extremely cheap and they're easy to obtain. To get there, Teleport to Pharaoh's Enclave, exit the North Gate, and run northeast to the Graveyard of Shadows. Calvaryon's Crypt is located in the northeast corner of the Graveyard. In order to enter the Crypt, you are required to pay a 50k fee from your bank. This fee is to increase your overall risk inside of the Wilderness, especially at these bosses, since they're below level 30 Wilderness. However, for every case you get, you're given back 10k until you recover your full fee. This is a sweet in the loot for PKers, knowing they will relieve, receive at least 50k cash upon entering the crypt and successfully killing you. There is a peak option if you right click the crypt entrance, however this is only unlocked after receiving 20 kill count at Calvaryon. And one special note is that the crypt is considered singles plus, meaning only one player and Calvaryon can attack you at the same time. So there's no way that you're going to get rushed by an, an entire team. Calvaryon's damage only comes from three sources. The Lightning Strike, the Shield Bash, and the Hellhounds that he spawns at 50% HP. Overall, the fight is quite simple, forgiving, and this would be an excellent place for newbie PVMers to learn dodge mechanics if it weren't for the PKer's risk. Calvaryon has two forms, blue and gold. The fight will always start with a blue form, and each of the forms are the exact same, except for two things. The gold phase has a slightly increased attack speed and it deals more damage whenever you mess up. So the fight will always start in the blue form and Calvaryon will randomly choose lightning strike or shield bash until he's damaged to 50% HP. At that 50% HP, he will become invincible until the two 30 hit point skeletal hounds are killed. Once the hounds are dead, switch back to Calvaryon and finish off the blue phase. Once the blues, blue phase is done, he will switch to gold and form a circle of lightning around himself. Stand underneath the boss until the animation is over. If you don't, you'll take anywhere from 0 to 30 damage. In the gold form, proceed just like with the blue phase, but keep in mind that he will attack slightly faster and his attacks will deal more damage if you mess up. And just like with the blue form, Calvaryon will spawn hellhounds at 50% HP, and those must be killed before you can damage the boss again. After they're dead, kill the boss and enjoy your loot. Now I'm going to teach you about the lightning attack and the shield bash attack. The lightning attack has a two tile radius around it, so the lightning attack itself will deal max damage. If you're adjacent to it, it will deal roughly half damage, and if you have one empty tile between you and the lightning, you will take no damage from it. The shield bash is denoted by shadows on the floor, and this is typically on one or one and a half sides of Calvaryon. Simply run outside of the shadows and you will not take any damage. You can be adjacent to these shadows and you'll be just fine. Next, I'm going to leak my strategy for escaping PKers here. I tend to position myself towards the exit since the PKers must teleblock and entangle you for them to have a real chance of even damaging you. Otherwise, you click your royal seed pod and ghost them like your last tender date ghosted you. Assuming the teleblock is landed, you are out of the door before they can entangle. If you get teleblocked, simply run south until you exit the wilderness or you can log out. Oh, by the way, I didn't know this until today. Once you log out, it voids your teleblock and you can log back in and keep enjoying the content. To follow the plan above, I keep my immediate attention in a small radius around my character to avoid the boss's damage. 
Then I check in the northwest portion of that grate in the middle of the room because that's where the PKers will end up landing, just like you whenever you enter the crypt. Overall, the loot seems to be pretty generous here, especially for Iron Men. You get blighted supplies, so you don't have to use your regular ones here. You get Herblor Secondaries, Dragon Bones, and a reasonable chance at the Dragon Pickaxe. This is a far cry from the old bosses and finally seems to be a fair way for a ten of players to obtain this in a reasonable amount of time. If you want to learn how to kill Zara on your Iron Man, click here. If you're looking to learn Ulm, click over here.